Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I thought we'd take a quick look at a project I've been keeping an eye on for a while. Today I thought we'd talk about... Phantom Brigade. By Tetragon Works. So, what is Phantom Brigade? Well, it's a science fiction game with an open-ended strategic campaign and a heavy focus on turn-based tactical combat between giant robots. Phantom Brigade is set in an alternate timeline on a version of Earth where a series of astronomical events led to the wide proliferation of rare elements. These rare elements led to the rapid regression of technology, including the creation of man-piloted combat robots known as walkers. The campaign revolves around a small country that has been invaded and occupied by a much larger neighboring force, which is intent on exploiting their resources. Although the player's government has officially surrendered, the player takes control of the Phantom Brigade, a small group of walker pilots who are intent on reclaiming their country's independence. Although specific details are scarce, the developers have stated that different territories will each have different resources that can benefit the player's forces, such as cities, military installations, and manufacturing facilities. The player will be tasked with using the Phantom Brigade to recapture their country from the hostile occupying force, one territory at a time. This will generally involve sending small squads of walkers to various potential target sites where they'll engage in combat with enemy squads. There will be a wide variety of various mission types, ranging from simple patrol ambushes to missions with more complex goals, such as disabling specific targets before reinforcements can arrive, or driving off enemy forces while causing minimum damage to surrounding civilian structures. And that, of course, brings us to the main focus of the game, turn-based tactical combat between giant killer robots. Phantom Brigade draws heavy influence from classic turn-based tactical games such as the Front Mission series, and it really shows. The player will generally control squads of two or three walkers at a time, taking on enemy forces of varying sizes in a variety of environments, including sprawling countrysides, densely wooded forests, and cramped city streets. The game will make use of a conventional action point system, meaning the player has to carefully balance their actions with a mixture of tactical maneuvering and precision strikes. Although the game makes use of a percentile-based hit system, every projectile is tracked, so the player will always have to keep positioning in mind lest they should accidentally cripple or kill one of their own units with friendly fire. The current Alpha already features six distinctly different weapon categories, including pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, assault rifles, sniper rifles, and long-range missile launchers. But the devs have also voiced interest in implementing other types of weaponry in the future, such as railguns, melee weapons, electromagnetic pulse weaponry, and even massive mech-sized riot shields. Given the sheer size of the combatants, the game doesn't feature a conventional directional cover system. But walkers can gain a temporary reprieve from combat by ducking behind buildings or hillsides to break their enemy's line of sight. But, as befitting a game featuring giant killer robots, the vast majority of the terrain in the game will be destructible. Even in the Alpha, this destructible terrain can be very satisfying, as your walkers crush cars underfoot or send trees crashing in every direction as they sprint across a densely wooded area. The player can also use this destructible terrain to their advantage, blasting right through an intervening building to hit enemies who are hiding on the other side or just sending entire buildings crashing down on top of their foes. Fortunately, walkers are generally very durable machines, and while individual limbs or components can be torn apart by incoming fire, it takes a truly massive amount of damage to actually destroy a frame. So, as long as the player manages to survive a conflict, they'll be able to theoretically repair their walker once they get it back to base. But if a walker happens to take enough damage to cause its power core to breach, then the frame will be lost for good, with rather explosive results. Fortunately, the player can still save their pilots, even if a walker is done for, by making use of an emergency ejection system. NPCs will also make use of ejection pods, bailing out when they feel that they're on the losing side of a conflict, 
which in turn will allow the player to salvage their abandoned walkers for usable components. But over time, surviving NPCs will remember their encounters with the player, gloating over past victories and swearing vengeance for past defeats. Relationships, both positive and negative, will be forged through dynamic dialogue segments that will trigger during battles, and over time the player may find themselves being plagued by recurring foes. Between battles, the player will be given the chance to repair and refit their walkers, swapping out components and trying out new builds. Each walker uses a universal bipedal frame, but is then outfitted with over 20 individual components that help to shape its function on the battlefield, allowing the player to fine-tune the performance of their mechanized soldiers. These components can all be damaged or destroyed during combat, and the player will have to adapt quickly when battle damage knocks out vital internal components such as arm motors or targeting sensors. The game will also feature a fairly robust customization system, allowing the player to change the colors, materials, and camo patterns of their individual walkers. The currently implemented system allows the player to choose from 37 different colors, which can be applied to individual limbs or to the entire mech at once. And in the future, the developers are also hoping to implement color shaders. Overall, Phantom Brigade is shaping up to be a rather ambitious game but the current alpha build clearly shows that the developers at Tetragon Works are up to the task. They've been making daily progress on the current build, and they appear to be very proactive when it comes to interacting with their fans on social media. They've also expressed strong support for the modding community, and have stressed that they're building the game with mod support in mind. The game will definitely be releasing on the PC platform, likely through Steam, and the developers have also mentioned the possibility of bringing Phantom Brigade to select consoles. While the developers are hesitant to commit themselves to a specific release date, the current rough estimate for the game's full release is sometime in 2018. But for those who just can't wait that long, you can visit Tetragon Works website and sign up for the official newsletter. This will keep you up to date with the latest news about Phantom Brigade and give you the chance to participate in future closed beta tests. Personally, I think the game already shows a lot of potential, and I've already had a lot of fun testing out the current alpha build of the game. This is definitely another project I'll be keeping a close eye on, and I can't wait to see how the game evolves as it gets closer to release. But for now, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about Phantom Brigade, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website or the official YouTube channel. Links are in the description.